that whole thing. And there's about a 30 <clears> second <throat> play here. So let me make sure that we are rolling. All right. And yes, I think we are active and live. Hey, welcome everybody out there. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm Sean Bradley. And today we are joined uh, by Tony Rossi and Courtney Rue. And we are going to talk about career coaching. And honestly, I don't know much about career coaching. And I'd probably fall into that crusty old skeptic pool that initially looks at like the broader world of life coaching as just someone else telling me to fix my attitude. And I'd say back to them, I can fix my own attitude, fix your own freaking attitude. <laughs> and uh, I mean, because there's like, there's certainly this pride that we hold in doing things ourselves. And we can sometimes dogmatically stick to that. And I think that viewpoint probably bleeds over into the general area of career coaching as well. But the problem that I have with career coaching, and the reason that I wanted to have you both on today is that I've actually seen career coaching work successfully, and that ruins my whole opinion of it all. So I wanted to talk to you guys, figure out what's going on, and get some free tips for the folks out there and answer any questions that people out there have about this, uh, because you really don't know what it's all about until you get into it. And you know, maybe you don't want to get into it if you don't know what it's all about. Um, so before we get started, the chat is open and we'll be taking questions a little bit later in the conversation. There are some members of the group, the practice that are joining us on the Zoom call. I've forced their cameras to be off because I don't think any of them took a shower. Uh, and <laughs> we're going to break out into a more intimate meeting with them and our guests uh, once the YouTube live stream is over. So if you're one of the people in the Zoom call from the practice, please save your questions for the breakaway session if you can, uh, so that we can get to as many questions from the general public as possible. Okay. Um, and if you're interested in the practice and you're out there in any of our classes, check it out on our website. It's easy to find. Uh, and I'll post uh, Tony's website and Courtney's website in the uh, chat on YouTube once I can figure out how to do that. So let's get started. Just uh, let me, <laughs> both of you just introduce yourselves quickly. Tell us, tell us who you are. Tony, Tony, who are you? Where do you come from? And uh, and the easy stuff first off. Yeah. Uh, so my name is Tony Rossi, uh, originally from Boston, been in Chicago for 12 years now, and I am an actor. And I just finally started accepting the title mind coach for the longest time I shied away from it. I'm like, no, I'm a mindset coach. And I'm like, well, I do career too. So let's just call it what it is. So life and mindset coach. Very cool. Um, and Courtney, tell us about yourself. Yeah, I'm Courtney Rue. I'm born and raised in Chicago, never left. Uh, and I uh, actually took a lot of classes at the Green Room and teach slash taught at the Green Room. So I am very familiar with this uh, with this Green Room thing. And I'm on the SAG-AFTRA local and national board. I'm on the show Chicago Med. I do voiceover. I'm on Jimmy Dean commercials right now. And uh, part of the work that I do is, uh, you know, working with actors, again, like Tony said, with their mindset. Um, part of that is career coaching. Part of it is life coaching. Um, although I too, like, get kind of about that term life coach, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> it can be, it can be seen as, you know, woo woo and blah, blah, blah. But really I just yeah. ask, I ask questions uh, and I get, get the answers out of you. You actually have the answers, not me. Got it. Got it. Um, and, and I asked uh, the two of you, some, some of the questions that you get a lot uh, surrounding this. And um, I think Tony had a, a, a great response. Uh, one of the questions that uh, is out there is, is, if we go through career coaching, does that mean that you're just telling us we have to be happy all the time? Absolutely. Happy. Yes. 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 All the absolutely. time. <laughs> <laughs> what was your response to that, Tony, when, when people go into this? Because I think sometimes if we're not, if we're not in a place that we term success right now, or if we're not in a place that we term satisfied or happy right now, um, the last thing we might want to do is go to somebody who's going to tell us, well, I want to change your mindset so that you're happy with where you're at right now, because then, then that seems like it's going to take away all of our ambition. What is, yeah. what, what is, what is your thought around that, Tony? I thought that was a great question. I don't think any of us want our mindsets changed. Like when I first started, so the way I got into life coaching was nine years ago. Actually, it, it was, it was almost 10. It was almost 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. I started working with Courtney. And I didn't want my mindset changed. I just didn't want to feel as miserable as I did at my shitty restaurant job. So, 
I mean, to anybody who says, well, like, I, I don't want you to fix my mindset. I don't want to fix your mindset. And I also agree going off of what Courtney said before, like, I don't think we're broken. I don't think we need fixing. I just think we need some extra tools for our tool belt because we weren't taught this stuff. And one of the biggest pushbacks I used to get when I first started to tell people that I was doing coaching was, well, how do I be happy all the time? And I was like, where, where does it say that on my website? Like where? <laughs> Who said you have to be? <laughs> exactly. So my, my, I, I'm a big fan of the phrase, don't skip the suck. You get to feel your feelings. I, the last thing I want you to do is bypass your feelings. And I think feelings are what we're all so good at. And it's why we're, it's why we're actors. So I don't want you to, to be happy all the time. Cause I don't think that's realistic. I do want you to be happy more often of the time, but I think that's going to depend on what's going on in your life and things like that. Yeah. Uh, and Courtney, how did, how did you wind up getting into the life coaching thing? Uh, similar to Tony, I was super career. unhappy. Hmm? Sorry, career coaching. No. Career, yeah, whatever. <laughs> coaching. You just call it coaching. coaching yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Similar to Tony, I was super like unhappy. I was not very confident in myself as an actor. And I took this program called Stay Sane and On Your Game. And it was with a life coach and um, a career coach and a meditation coach. It was three people. And I just really uh, felt very connected to the life coach. And I actually ended up working with her one-on-one -on -one, um, because I, I was on a group call, sort of like this, but people could, were calling in and talking to the coaches. And when I was talking to this coach, I just started bawling my eyes out, crying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, so then we started working together and, uh, at the time I was still like, I feel like always part of my like whole values and personality is that I'm sort of like available to talk to people and help people and people would come to me even before I was a coach. And so she sort of, she sort of saw that in me and like saw that I was like her in that way. And, um, asked me, do you know, do you want to be a life coach? And I said, well, I mean, yeah, I've thought about it, but like, I'm already an actor. I already don't know how to make money uh, and like <laughs> do the thing that I'm doing. Right? <laughs> so um, <laughs> we worked through that. We worked through those, we'll call it limiting beliefs of like not being able to make money as an actor and not being able to make money as a coach, which were all the same uh, limiting beliefs about not being able to make money. And through like, I got a life coaching certification. I actually took a year off of on-camera acting. I was still doing voiceover, but um, when I came back, uh, I feel like I was just more confident as a coach. I feel like I was more confident as an actor, um, made more money as an actor and as a coach because I was able to work through my stuff and then help other people. Super, super. I'm seeing, I, I juggle everything while we do these. I'm like admitting people into this room and saying hi yeah. to the folks in the chat. It's great to see your faces on the chat. Stan Adams says hi, Elizabeth. Hey, Sherry. Um, hey. Um, Courtney, um, am I totally wrong? Were you, you were at a point, like this was years and years and years ago, um, where you were just like, I'm just done with this acting thing, almost at, mm -hmm. at a certain point where you're just done with this acting thing. And I think we, yes. we had talks and I was like, go voiceover for right now. Just like, don't, 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 don't disappear because you've got what it takes. And now Courtney's like, I got yelled at by Courtney, everybody, but by the way, for my email, which said she's been in over 60 Chicago med episodes. She's actually, she wrote back to me immediately. And she said, it's like a hundred. <laughs> so, <laughs> so was I, kidding. I, I, kidding. I know. I know. Yeah, she's kidding. But too, she's just, so, so the numbers are way up there, but I think uh, Courtney can be a really good example of somebody who's, work through um this with a a, a career coach and has um seen a, a ton of benefit by just changing that uh that approach or yeah i don't know if you two get this way or people on the zoom or the webinar but every once in a while i'm, I'm at the point right now where i get uh i just get really burnt out and i get really I like, I get upset when I get an audition in my e email and I'm like, I'm like, Oh, I do another. I know, right? <laughs> right? And so 
that happened a, a while ago and I did, I took that year off. And when I came back, I was way more refreshed and ready to get back, but I did want to quit completely, I think. And I'm at that point again now where I'm like, I emailed my agents and I was like, look, I think this is the perfect time for me to take another break. Cause I'm just, I I'm just really feeling burnt out. And with the strike, like we're not auditioning for half the stuff anyway. So, um, yeah. so I'm actually on a break right now, but again, like you said, still not with voiceover because I just feel like voiceover is so easy to do it and forget about it and let it go and like never think about it again. Whereas, and maybe it's because you get more voiceover auditions. And when I get an on-camera audition, it's like a bigger deal. And so I'm, I like make a bigger deal out of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it's important to allow yourself to take breaks because I did take that break. And then my friend, uh, you know, Becca McCracken, she's a casting agent at the time. She said, Hey, you know, there's a lot of TV shows happening here in Chicago. Um, you know, I think you should come back. And I was like, uh, okay, I'll come back. And then I, um, auditioned for Chicago Met and I booked Chicago Met. So I'm glad I didn't give up completely, but I am glad I took that break because I don't think I would have been mentally prepared mm -hmm. for, uh, to audition for Chicago Met and, and do that. It can be, it can be draining when those auditions come through, especially for the theatrical stuff. Um, you know, not only just on the whole, the grind of like putting stuff out there and maybe booking it, maybe not booking it, um, and dealing with that side of things, but frankly, as an actor, um it's emotionally draining to deal with these scripts a lot and 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 tony you you, you specialize in actors a lot uh in terms of the the coaching that you do and i imagine that that comes up quite a bit um be, be yeah I, let me let me let me let me let me, let me say that for a second um and just for for context for people tony we talked a, just a touch about process and i i, I want to just like take a look at what is the process of career coaching look like? How do you, how do you break it down with people? It's, I can't imagine it's just like, um, you know, being a cheerleader in somebody's corner. Correct. Yeah. I mean, in my experience, every coach is different. Like if you come to me versus going to Courtney, it's going to be a different quote unquote process. Mm -hmm. I have heard of other coaches uh, for actors who will be like, okay, when we work together, here is step one, here is step two, here is step three. For me personally, I have more of, like I referred to the tools for our tool belt. I have a tool bag. We're going to use different tools for the tool bag based on what you need. So we're not going to go through step one, step two, step three, because you might not need all of those steps. And also that order, like an order might not be right for you. I also mm -hmm. really like to meet actors where they're at, because an actor who has all the time in the world, I, I, I don't know if that's a, if that exists, but actors who have all the time in the world might want to go at things a little bit quicker versus the actors who, like Courtney was talking about, when we're burnt out, well, then let's go at a slower pace so that you don't burn out and that you're not now not only dreading those auditions come in, but dreading our sessions together because it's another thing on the calendar. So for me, I just I want to I want to meet you where you're at and see what you need. What does the process look like? Is that like, hey, I'm meeting with you every day, every every week, or am I meeting with you once a week? Or what 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 does the whole process like look like for somebody diving into something like this? And how long it does it take? Is it perpetual yeah. or like what, yeah. is, what, is, what is the whole thing? So again, every person's different. And I, I sounds yeah. like I'm trying to dodge your question right now, but uh to give like uh, a layout of uh how people work with me. It's usually either privately or in small groups. If it's in small oh, cool. groups, you can come to my calls, either like I hold two group coaching calls a month. You can come to both of those. You can come to just one. You might have some months where you can't come to either and we connect in the Facebook group. Or we can connect privately. My private uh, clients and I traditionally have met either once or twice a month. Twice a month would be max, but usually like just once a month. Yeah, oh, cool. for me... Um... So I would start with what's called a clarity session. And in that session, I ask the same questions, but I always get different answers, you know, depending on the person. So the, the questions that I would ask you would be like, what's your ideal life and why is that important to you? What do you feel like is holding you back from achieving that ideal life? And on a scale of one to 10, how willing are you to 
either like strip away those beliefs or take action towards your goals uh, or both. And, you know, that ses- that first session informs me of how to move forward from there with that person. And I tend to do one-on-one coaching every other week with someone for about four or six sessions. And, you know, my goal is not to work with you forever. My goal is for you to like get the tools that you need and be able to do, you know, work with yourself moving forward um, and come to me for some one-offs later. If you, if you need a, like a tune up or something. Yeah. Um, To piggyback off of what Courtney just said, I've had clients who have worked with me for like, we worked together for like two years before stopping. I had other clients who within a, a few months had what they needed. Usually we're both able to tell like, hey, do you still need this? Are you good? I feel like you're good. Mm-hmm. So we we have that conversation. Cool, 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 cool. Um, obviously we're in a crazy time with the strikes and everything. And we just came out of COVID and everybody's like, not knowing what's going on and 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 we're doing this over zoom we're not with each other right now but i i think we can connect quite a bit over zoom but uh, uh a lot of people can feel kind of isolated um so i just want people out there to have some sort of perspective on like why do you find other people so they may be able to identify like oh yep that's why i would or that's what i'm thinking right now or this is the issues that i'm having right now so are there any examples of like where people are coming from you don't have to give me specific people or anything like that clearly but uh what kind of issues um, do you see come to the table that people are struggling with that are just frustrated or, or, or motivating them to want to move to a new place? Well, I'll start with what, you know, what Tony said was he came to me and said, I hate my day job, <laughs> right? Oh and Did like a, ever... a lot of people uh, have a goal to be a full-time actor. Mm-hmm. And while that is, sometimes possible, sometimes not possible. Like the, what I helped Tony with was to find a job that he did like while he was on the journey to becoming a full-time actor. Right. And so, and then he got into coaching, which is a job he loves, right. A side job that he loves. And um, so I think, you know, sort of to what you were speaking of earlier, Sean, of like, oh, you got to change your attitude. Well, it's either you change the situation or you change your attitude. <laughs> so it's like you can do either one of those, but like something's got to give, right? And sometimes changing the situation isn't always um, that can't always happen right then. And so we work on like changing how you feel about it or how you think about it while you're in that situation and while you work on getting to changing the situation. That makes sense. Uh, But other things besides, you know, becoming a full time actor or not hating your day job, um, just feeling like, you know, working on relationships, uh, building relationships, whether that's in the industry or outside of the industry. um, You know, what I like to work on people with is their whole life. So I'm like, yes, tell me your acting goals. I want to hear your acting goals. Let's work on your acting goals. But also like, do you want to travel? Do you, uh, do you want better relationships? Do you want to feel good in your body? Like all of these things I think make for a more fulfilled life, which will then help you sort of let go of like white knuckling your acting career. Because if your acting career is the only thing that makes you happy and it's not going well, like in a strike or in a pandemic, then you're screwed. Right. But if you have all these other sort of, uh, if you diversify your happiness, (laughs) right, then you could be like, well, acting's not going great right now, but you know, it is like my friendships are amazing or I'm getting to travel or I love my job outside of acting. That's what I work on. What about you, Tony? You know, I have a a Facebook group. It's free for anybody who wants to join. It's called Actor Problems, and it's a self-care for actors group. And I ask people, there's a little intake form uh, when you join the group. And one of the questions is, what is the biggest actor problem you're having? And I didn't mean to leave it so vague, but it's very interesting to see the mix of career challenges versus mindset challenges people are having. For mindset challenges, the words I see over and over are anxiety, self-doubt, um, and low confidence. Mm-hmm. 
And it, it's really fascinating. Not only are they going through the same things, they're using the exact same words. And to kind of piggyback off your point a second ago, Sean, I don't think we realize how much we are all going through when we're going through it. Like we can all easily say it right now, I'm stressed over the strike. I don't think we realize just how like the level of stress that different people having like is almost identical. And that's one of the reasons why I offer group coaching in addition to private coaching, because I think it's, I, I want you all to hear what each other are saying so that we don't feel so alone. So that's one of them for career. A phrase that I'm hearing uh, come up time and time again is, I feel like I'm not doing enough. And that's for the actor who's putting in like tons of hours every week and for the actor who doesn't have a whole lot of, uh, of time because of things like burnout or day jobs or other commitments. So I would say like mindset side, there's a lot of self-confidence uh, challenges. Uh, that's something I can resonate with. A lot of anxiety and self-doubt. And then on the career side, feeling like we're not doing enough. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure, for sure. Um, what are what are first steps uh, that you would take with somebody if they're just having a lot of self doubt uh, right now? Um, I imagine you don't like test them on their acting to see like, well, let me see, maybe you're terrible. Maybe. Well, yeah, maybe you should quit. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> I don't know. Like, what? Where? Where? Where do, where do we start there? If somebody's got uh, you know self doubt. Hmm. That's a good I think question. I would, I, I would yeah, have go, to go ask ahead, questions. Courtney. Yeah, I, 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 I would ask questions about where it's coming from. And, you know, what I, I think what you want to focus on is what's in your control. So like you can't control booking a job. You just can't ever. No. But you can control what classes you're taking or if you're in the practice and you're practicing on a daily basis, you can control like working out and eating healthy, you can control how much water you drink in a day, you can control, um, you know, the, the time you spend with friends, like, there's all these things that you can do that are in your control to focus on, while just like being able to let go of the, the booking the job, because if, if like your happiness and your self confidence um, ties into only booking the job, then you're not going to be confident. So you have to tie your self-confidence into the actions that you take that are within your control. So yeah, I, I, I can identify with like, you know, there's just this silly stuff like drinking water enough or doing this enough, mm -hmm. or are you spending such and such time writing or like, how, how, how are you comparing? Right. Or are you scrolling uh, on social media like me? Um, yeah. you I've, know, 12 hours ice cream. I've, I've had ice cream every day of COVID until maybe like three weeks ago. I'm like, done, I'm done. <laughs> It was, I literally had that conversation with Scott oh. like two days ago. And then we went to a family party and there was ice cream. And he's like, you said you were going to stop eating ice cream. And I was like, I know, gelato. I was, I was like, I love ice cream. That's what I have some ice cream. I'll have a little yogurt. Oh my gosh. Don't take it but, away from me. But I, and I know. And, I, and I'm, I'm sometimes bad where I'll go like way in the other direction. I'll be like, all right, 100% none of this. I'm all this. Uh, and then that yeah. can be exhausting as well. Mm -hmm. Um uh, are there any tool sets that you have to start? If somebody says, maybe I'm not doing enough, maybe they're right. Maybe, maybe, they, maybe they really are like tuning out too it much. Could be. They've needed to be. Um, do you have any tools um, to motivate people uh, in the, in the immediacy of the daily to-do list? Um, or is, I, I, I think, Probably a huge motivation is just talking with somebody first off. And you know, giving I, I was just going to say one of the easiest things, yeah. especially if we're meeting on a regular basis is between now and the next time we meet, what is something you want to get done? It, mm -hmm. it sounds so easy. It almost sounds like, okay, well, I can just do it on my own. But do we? Because I'm thinking of all of the coaching admin tasks that I should be doing that I haven't been doing. But like that <laughs> one little thing is like, hey, what is it that you want to do that makes yeah. you that like maybe because sometimes, as you said, Sean, we feel like we're not doing enough because we have these to do lists in our head and we're yeah. just not doing any of them. So it's like I want to get a brain dump as much as possible of all the different things you feel like you're not doing. And then at your pace versus how fast you want to go and how much bandwidth you have. Let's start to check those items off. And it's not about getting everything done. It's about getting them done at a pace that really works for you. And from there, I think that that feeds into self-confidence too. Yeah. 
I, I agree. I think the accountability is key. Like I, um, when the strike happened, I had been working with a personal trainer and I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be making the same amount of money. So I'm not going to work with my personal trainer anymore. And then just like, didn't work out for a few weeks. Yeah. And I just texted her and was like, Hey, it turns out I don't work out when you're not around. So I need to hire you again. But, um, but yeah. And to piggyback on what Tony was saying, I think what I talk about with clients a lot is like activation energy. So once you get into something, it's easier to do than when you're just like sitting on the couch. So what I always say is if you could say, I'll do this for five minutes. So I'll, I'll set a timer and I'll, um, work on a script for, for five minutes and that's all. And then after five minutes, if you don't feel like doing it anymore, you stop. But if you can and want to keep going, if it's exciting to you, then keep going. And usually you will keep going. And that's the same with exercise. That's the same with, um, anything you do once you're in motion, right? It's science. Like you, it's easier to stay in motion, but like getting off of the couch, shutting off the TV or the social media to do that thing is the hardest part. So tricking your brain into saying, I'm only going to do this for five minutes is, is a super helpful tool. Yeah. It is. I think a lot of it does boil down to that where it's the accountability is, is so incredibly valuable, but we, we so often refuse to put any value on it. Meaning like, I wouldn't want to pay anybody to hold me accountable because that feels like I'm just failing myself and not strong enough to do it on my own. But if you look at the, 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 the return, if like, if I'm trying to get a script written and I need somebody to say, did you write five pages today? And I'm like, yep. Yes, I did. Uh, <laughs> To, to actually, to literally, if I could crank out that script, what is that script worth to me? Or if I could crank out that, or if I could get my acting to a certain place where I can start mm -hmm. booking stuff that I want to, what is that worth to me? I think that's, it, it becomes a no brainer, but it's just so ingrained in so many of our minds that we're, we're yeah. well, ourselves up by the bootstraps, which literally <laughs> you can't do, but somebody else can pull you up by your bootstraps. Yes. And I think gravity works. Yeah. if you, you know, if you pay for something, you are going to value it more and you're going to be more likely to do it as well. So anytime I'm in a group for free, I like barely show up, but if I have paid oh, yeah. $400 for that class or whatever it is, like I'm showing up. Right. right. So yeah, I, I just think like free stuff is great, but also does it give you the accountability you need? Maybe it does. Maybe you're one of those people who can do the free stuff and it, oh. it it's great for you. And we, and, yeah. the, and the, I think the biggest trouble is too, is that we can hold ourselves somewhat accountable and it works sometimes to a certain degree. Yeah. But is it um, sustainable? I, but I, I think well, I was, I was blown away by some uh, interview. I think it was Javier Bardem was, was, was talking on fresh air or something like that years ago. And he was talking about a, a role. He was, I think in no country mold then. Um, and he was talking about the work that he was doing with his acting coach. He's like, well, my coach and I, we went over this, 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 and you're like, wow, this is some like massive, awesome, famous actor. And he's sitting here working with an acting coach before he goes in front of the Coen brothers to work with them because that's his collaborator. That's, I mean, it's part of his team. And, you know, obviously, you know, people have this, you know, crew that they work with when they're on a, on a super famous level and it helps a ton and they have trainers and they have all the people that they're paying to do this stuff and we're expecting right. ourselves to like be able to be to get there but a lot of them don't, don't talk about it no a lot of them know. don't talk about it so you don't know you're you no. don't know that like he's working with a coach right and and that and that coach and he, he are collaborators is 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 what they are. They're they're collaborators yeah. in this business, which I think is just a beautiful, beautiful thing, as opposed to somebody telling him how to be better than he really is and and making you know it's it's taking away the thunder from him. It's not at all. It's it's somebody to work with. Mm -hmm. Well, Sean, I think to your point that it, it does take a little bit of a mindset shift to prioritize mm -hmm. hiring a coach. I also want to address the elephant in the room. We don't have a lot of money. So when we have these limited yeah. resources, yeah, we're like, yeah, yeah. okay, well, I'm in the practice and I'm about to get new headshots. So wh wh where's the money coming from? Yeah, 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 the yeah. way I, so I do, and it's the reason why we're on strike right now, right? So <laughs> I also want to kind of give like something that's helped me because like we've talked about health a couple of times. There are times where I would consider, so I, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a health and wellness junkie these days. And there were times where I like would never consider a health and wellness service. Case in point, I started going to acupuncture two years ago 
And for the longest time, I avoided it because number one, I just didn't want to do it. But number two, I knew that it was going to be expensive. And on average, I have found acupuncture, number one, isn't covered by insurance, but number two costs like a hundred bucks a session. I don't want to pay a hundred dollars a session. And if you really want to see the results of acupuncture, you go on a regular basis, at least starting out. It got to the point where I would not miss a session like per week. Like I would go every single week and now I don't get sinus infections anymore. And I was getting <laughs> debilitating sinus infections. Wow. So I think- And what was the cost of that, see, right? What was the cost of getting debilitating sinus infections? I was canceling infections. vacations. I was canceling dates. Not that I go on a lot of dates, but I was canceling like <laughs> everything. And so I, it got to the point where I was like, I, I got to find a way. And so yeah. eventually okay. I don't- I, yeah. I don't, I don't know like what, where the money came from, but I think once we start to see the benefits now, all of a sudden we're like, okay, I can't not do this. And this doesn't mean you have to spend thousands of dollars on coaching, but maybe getting those initial sessions so that you can start to see, you don't have to be in as much pain as you were before. You just take the money away from the ice cream. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Just stop eating ice cream. There you go. Stop eating uh, avocado toast and Starbucks. <laughs> no, I will uh, say that SAG after insurance covers acupuncture because I go to the acupuncturist and it's not that expensive on, on the SAG after insurance. So Okay, well, I just got to join SAG goal. and yeah. get the insurance. <laughs> exactly. No big deal. So uh, Kate, Katie has a question. Do you suggest a particular medium to track goals or tasks or things you've been putting off? Uh, she's always utilized the in writing calendar checking boxes approach. However, she's having trouble getting motivated tracking her own goals. Do you have any? Well, I love tracking goals on a piece of paper, but if that's not working for you, sometimes what I'll do is, well, I, I, I like to have like a, a big to-do list or big goal list to work from. And then every day, like a smaller one, cause you, cause the big one can be overwhelming. So it's like, what am I going to do today? But I don't know. Do you use Google calendar at all? Cause I love Google calendar. And sometimes Courtney, you I'll got me put... into Google calendar several yeah. years ago and I have not <laughs> stopped since. I can't live without it. What about tasks involving Google calendar? Like I'm not loving the tasks feature. No, I don't use that. Mind that. Google hasn't created a better task. I know, though. I know, but I'll just put in like the next day, the goals that I want to, or the, like the tasks that I want to complete in like a, a, a calendar thing. So I'm like, okay, tomorrow I want to, I need to do the, the, of course the webinar is in here, but maybe I'm like, send out a newsletter um, and call this person and uh, text my agents or something, you know, whatever it is, I'll put it in the Google calendar. So I see it as like a to do for, for the next day. I don't know if that's yeah. helpful at all, but yeah. Um, otherwise just having separate, like, like a big goal list to work from and then making smaller ones for the day. It's yeah. helpful for me. Yeah, I like to do a combination of things. First of all, if you're working with me, um, again, we're going to have that brain dump and we're going to have a list of your goals. And I'm going to kind of repeat back to you, hey, is this still what we're working towards? But then in terms of specific tasks, like Courtney was talking about, like I'll use my Google calendar to block off time where I'm doing things. But for individual tasks, I use a combination of just the notes app on, on uh, iPhone. And then for reminders that I get things done, people to follow up with, I use um, Asana Task Manager and it'll send me an email when what's due like oh, for the day. That's cool. I, I'm going to look that up. I also use Trello to keep track right. of things. And like, I think they're very similar. I think so too. Yeah. Is using, that okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you might be good. Yeah. And Trello. you can have different bulletin boards with Trello and you can invite people mm -hmm. if you. Uh, to a certain bulletin board, um, which I yep. I really like Trello. And then I just thought of something else that I I it, out of my mind. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Um. And and Katie, uh, yeah, I I also use Trello. I've I've played with a lot of stuff throughout the last few years in terms of trying. I didn't try Asana, but um, I've tried a few other things, and I I do the Trello thing too. And it's the the Kanban board where you basically have your to do list, and you can take these cards and you drop them into like I want to do this in the future. This is like what I'm working on today. Uh, and then you, and you can also create. There's free accounts uh, on it. I don't know what the tiers are. You'd have to look at the pricing thing. It's it might be like ten bucks a month, or it might be uh, the free. I think account. I do the free. But yeah, you can do I, the free account. I um, use I, I use free on Asana. 
Yeah, I use it stuff for the green room. So I have a lot of automated tasks that need to happen on a, on a regular basis. So I don't know if the free account lets you create weekly items that just keep popping up. Um, so I, I know every time I need to do a recap or something, um, things will pop up every Friday or I have to create assignments every Wednesday or whatever. So they're not on my board at all until they until they do show up. But I find that to be an extra. Yeah, benefit. I remember the thing I wanted to talk about is... Yep. Uh, I haven't used it in a while, so forgive me if it's not even a thing anymore, but there was this really helpful program called If This Then That, and so you can wow. get, it would just be a, sort of like computer programming, and you would put in, if it's raining, text me, and then it would like text you the weather. If it is two o'clock, oh, wow. like email me to work out, like uh, and you could do all sorts of things. I mean, on a, like it, you could say, I don't know, what's something that you want to remember ev like every week or every day? Like, oh, if it's, you know, if it's um, a Wednesday, remind me that the farmer's market is happening. Like, I don't know, because sometimes on my Google calendar, I'll ignore things even though they're there <laughs> and like I'll have space blocked out for things, but I'll then just ignore it if it's there all the time. But if it's a reminder that pops up via like text message or email, then I'm like, Oh yeah, I forgot. I have to do this thing. I don't know. I am answering a chat here for uh, Sherry. I'm going to post in the uh, sauna is, is what, um, is what uh, Tony was talking about. I think that just posted. Very cheap, 250 a month or free or free, yeah. A lot a lot of those have free free things. Oh, I guess that's not YouTube. Hi Michelle. YouTube Michelle's in the background. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> awesome. Uh so yeah, if, if there's any other questions people have, feel free to throw stuff into the chat. Um, what else? What have we not covered? We I know we had kind of had a conversation before we started this thing. Um what are there any unique issues for people right now? Like, how, how are you guys feeling about the strike situation right now? What, how do you feel about this in terms of a time to become very motivated versus a time to chill out and, and get back? And I think it's, I think it's individual by individual for sure. Yeah. Courtney, like, yeah. I mean, Courtney's on TV shows constantly, 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 constantly. And then she's like, I can use a break. That's great. Um, what about somebody that's been, not cranking out episodes after episodes over the last year and they're like oh my gosh now this on top of everything is there you know what what, what is your thought in terms of is this a terrible time to be approaching people a uh, terrible time career-wise to be getting stuff done i think it depends on the person i think yeah. I, I i would i would check in with you again uh mm -hmm. check in see how you're feeling what do you feel like doing right now? Do you feel like using up all this quote unquote? And by the way, I just want to say, I think it's a myth that we like, yes, we might have more space on our calendars. I feel like mine always just gets filled up. I don't know. That's right. Just me, Someone was like, oh, you're on strike. You're on vacation. I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, but, but if you do want to use whatever this extra time is for your career and you want to go gung ho, then let's go. If on the other hand, you're like, I really could use a break, then that's fine too. I don't think there's one right answer. Um, yeah. I like the thought of using this time to get your materials together and get re things ready. But if you're not feeling it and you're hurting right now, maybe we just need to work on you. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. I, yeah, I think putting it into perspective of like, I was talking to someone, actually it was, recording a podcast so if you don't know i have a free podcast the whole artist courtney Rue. it's back it's back i took a two-year hiatus because i had a baby um and i was tired <laughs> uh but i just was doing like um a mock coaching with someone yesterday a real coaching but through the podcast and they were talking about how they had all these fears about the strike and like not working during the strike and in their ideal life, what they wanted to feel was like creativity and peace and freedom. And um, we talked about how during the pandemic, they were able, oh, and abundance during the pandemic, they were able to make money 
and they were able to feel creative and to feel that freedom and that peace and through certain things that they were doing. And it wasn't, it had nothing to do with the outside. So it, this has nothing to do with the strike. She can still do those same things and feel that creativity, that peace, that abundance that she was feeling no matter what's going on in the outside world. Um, and I, I think something that helps me is to think about like, even when there's not a strike, even when there's not a pandemic, we're not always working. We're not always getting auditions. And so it's, uh, everybody's going through it at the same time. Yes. Mm -hmm. But we know how it feels to have this, this time where we're not getting an audition. We know how it feels to have this time when we're not working. It's no different than any other time in terms of like, what you can be doing that's in your control. Can you control the AMPTP? No. Can you control the rest that you're taking and the work that you're doing? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I've got some questions here. Um, and and on that too, in terms of the the, the time, uh, the question that I get from actors a lot, I have gotten recently um, is, should I be going after an agent right now? I'm hearing conflicted stuff. Like so some for the actors out there that need an agent, they're like, is this a terrible time to be? I've heard that this is a terrible time to get an agent because there's no auditions to prove my merit once I get that agent. So they're going to wait. Um, so if you've got a to-do list, like I need, and we all have our to-do list, like I need to get new headshots. I need to get my mm -hmm. first agent. I need to do whatever. Take a look at that and be realistic about, you know, what is the strike really keeping you from doing on that list? And what is it not? Uh, honestly, in my in my opinion, from what who I've talked to, um, I would think right now is probably the best time to get an agent because they're not doing yeah. anything but housekeeping and get and right. pick new actors is the housekeeping stuff. Uh, there are some majorly big uh, agencies out west that have put some people on furlough uh, during the strike, but I don't really feel like that's the case in Chicago. I might be I might be mistaken, but from everything that I've heard, no, they're they're working. So this yeah, is, a, they're still this doing commercials and industrials and exactly. Yeah. And exactly. We're I, not I think, yeah. Either. I mean, we're, striking. I think the difference in LA is that some agents out in LA are, they're Special. only doing TV theatrical yeah. and yeah. here we do, they do everything. So it's yeah. like, yeah, they're still working. And like Sean said, they have hope. I, it would seem like more time on their hands because they're not doing these TV theatrical auditions. So I would, I would submit, I would, mm -hmm. And that's Get your headshots and, and there are commercials going on right now. We've I've worked with actors. I mean, we work on multiple, 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 multiple commercials every week um, in the practice where people have real auditions that they want to they want to crank on. So there's definitely stuff going on. Uh, Stan has the question. I've been on Chicago Fire three times in Chicago PD once. Why can't I break Chicago Med? Well, I can ask Courtney next since she's full Courtney. represent Chicago Med. But Stan, my <laughs> yes. guess is because Stan, you look exactly like Dr. Halstead. <laughs> Nick, Nick. Hi, Stan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good news. Dr. Hall said has gone this season. So, oh, so yeah, oh, okay. he's so he's gone. Your issue is. <laughs> How can he be gone? gone? Oh, my I know. God. We love Dr. Hall said. He's staying in Chicago, though. Um, Such a nice guy. Oh, my so God. So nice. Love him. Actually, oh. his I just got an email from Second Story that his wife got a job with Second Story. So it seems like mm -hmm. they will be they will be staying here, even though he's not on the show. Stan, you know, it's very difficult to say any particular show, any particular time. Those are different. Somebody did make a good point that it, those are different uh, casting directors, although I'm sure that yes. uh, Gary Ross is bringing Stan in for sure. Um, it's It can be super anecdotal, dull actor per actor, uh, but that's a lot. And I don't, maybe I'm too sickly. I think you're too healthy looking, Stan. Nobody would believe that you're, uh, <laughs> that you need to be in a hospital. Um, but honestly, um, <laughs> three times on fire and once on PD, that's, that's a lot. And once people start remembering you, everybody always throws around. So this is Chicago series in general, everybody throws around the, well, at the beginning, it was once you're on one of the shows, you can't be in the world at all. Then once you're on one of the shows, it's going to be five years before you can be on here. Then once you're on one of the shows, it's three years. And now it's kind of like, once you're on one of the shows, it'll be one season. And then once that season's done, then you can be back on again. But there's there in all reality, there's no formula uh, for it. If, if your tape gets sent to um, the executives and they remember you, then they'll be like, oh, we just use them. We can't. So it, 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 it really winds up being rather arbitrary. Uh, I've, I've found uh, where you can get a tape sent off and they'll be like, Ooh, 
I know it was two years ago, but it was such and such a size of role, or was this memorable or not memorable, or so we can have them back next year. Um, I don't know, Courtney, if you have any other insight to that, but I, well, if you can get me on Chicago PD and Chicago Fire, that would be great. <laughs> I've already been on those. Have no, you done crossovers yet? Yeah, couple, yeah. a couple. I know. <laughs> um, um, any advice? I think this is a great question uh, from Kayla. Any advice for actors who feel scattered in their goals? TV versus musical theater versus VO, and how do you focus and spend time wisely? Because I think a lot of different views can definitely tug people in different directions. Is that? In yeah, I think like I would ask yourself if you really want to be doing all of those. If yes, then great. But you you can you can only really work on like one of those at a time, right? So figuring out when you want to work on which one, but also like I used to do musical theater and on camera and voiceover and coaching and, you know, sag after I had a level. And like, at some point I was like, something's got to give, right? So uh, I just, knew, I know that I did, was not super happy doing theater anymore. And so I let that go. But that's me. Like, I'm not saying that you have to, but I would do some questions about like, do you still want to do? You don't have to do everything, right? And then I'd figure out what is the priority, you know? And that can be like, what's the priority in making money or working on your craft or um, doing what you love? Like, there's look, there's there's lots of questions I would love to ask you about that. <laughs> yeah, I think that, that was I, clarity for sure. Yeah, because because you do. I, yeah, I can. Yeah, Tony, go ahead. I can relate just as a as, as an actor and a coach, as I'm sure you can, Courtney. Just like juggling multiple hats, and then mm -hmm. like during like this past spring, I ran the Boston Marathon, and that and like fundraising for that like took so much of my focus, and so I think as Courtney said, it's easier to focus on one goal at a time, but I would want to ask more questions to see, because there might be a low hanging fruit where one of those might be easier for you to get than the others. If you're doing musical theater, I'm going to guess you've probably been in classes for musical theater. I'm making an assumption right now and that you can sing. So maybe musical theater is the low hanging fruit. Or if you're trying to advance your acting career, maybe we can use musical theater as leverage towards getting an agent if you don't have an agent. So I think there's different ways to go about this, but there are different seasons where one area can get our attention over the other. I, I think, and that, that ties back to both of you had, had mentioned that, you know, you talk about the whole life of the person, which, you know, then we get into the yeah. life coaching versus career coaching, but it, I think it really um, plays an issue. And Kayla, I think having that question and just posting that question um, is a, a, a major first step of like focusing on what those answers might be, because there's hard decisions throughout all this. I love theater. Mm -hmm. Um, but for me, I just can't do it right now because I'm a parent of two kids that are in high school. And I, and I, and I look at that, I'm like, ah, but theater could do this. Or I, I could, it could push me as an artist, could do all that. But then you become selfish on other areas of your life. And I'm like, I, I can't tell my kids that we're not leaving town for the summer of your, you know, 13th year. I, 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 I can't hold my career, um, above the family thing. And I think other people can, and I, they, I don't blame anybody else for doing so if that's where they're at. Right. I think every family is different. Every dynamic under every single roof uh, winds up being very different. Um, um, I've, I've had a lot more opportunities to direct things as of late, and I've really enjoyed uh, directing uh, projects um, for a long time uh, when my commercial uh, career was in, in my thirties. Uh, you just, you look at, you look at your, availability i'm like i can't give away this money because this money is just too good um and i so i couldn't i, I was like 100 percent, thousand percent availability for everything acting um just because you know they're sweet sweet 30s. 30s i know right? <laughs> tell me about it but you know pretty <laughs> decisions, i think and, and sometimes those decisions suck um it doesn't mean you have to say goodbye to everything else but i think prioritizing it, or maybe ranking stuff so that you're looking at where where am I first placing my availability as an actor? Um, am mm -hmm. I making myself available for the musical theater or am I making myself available for the TV stuff so that I have to have 
um, MREs on every theater show that I do. So you make, you start making intelligent decisions in terms of contractual obligations. I think, especially when it comes to theater versus on camera work, you know, voiceover. A see, lot Sean, of you are, uh, see, Sean, you are a career coach. Don't right? sell yourself short. No, what were you going to say about voiceover? Career coach. Everybody, everybody's goals are like, I want more auditions. My, my, my career coaching is always do better acting. I'm just kidding. I'm just I mean, that's the first, right? Like, just like get in, get your butt in Sean's class and have him teach you how um, to act. There we go. <laughs> um, what else? Any other thoughts? We're, 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 we're getting close to the hour here and we're, we've got uh, to hop in with the uh, folks on the practice, but if there's any other last uh, questions, uh, throw them up in the uh, chat or if Courtney and uh, Tony have anything else. Oh, tell me, what do you guys do that's like short? Uh, like, do you have, do you have uh, free stuff podcasts? Do you have uh, workshops that are one day thingies? Give me, give me a little, uh, w- without a sales pitch, give me your sales pitch. Just tell me what's for, what's for sale <laughs> or free. What's going on? Tony, what do you, um, I, I have a newsletter. I have a blog on CourtneyRue.com, R-I-O-U-X. Uh, and I have a podcast, The Whole Artist with Courtney Rue. I awesome. also was thinking about uh, giving away a couple free coaching sessions. I don't know if that's okay here, Sean. I wanted to talk to you about it before, but then I ate lunch instead. No, you can, you can, you can do whatever. That's cool. all right. Uh, after after Tony talks, I'll I'll say how to get a free coaching session. Tony, tell me what 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 do you got? Because you got some. Cool, I love the name of one of your workshops. What what? Tell me about what. what... Oh, the Stress Day Factor right, workshop. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't have another one of those coming up just yet. So okay. TBD. Um, to stay up to date, I have a actor self care newsletter with thoughts that don't get posted publicly anywhere else. So those are only on the newsletter, but that's free to sign up. TonyRossiCoaching.com. Um, I also, I feel like I'm literally copying Courtney because I also have a podcast called the actor problems podcast. And as of just earlier today, I recently opened up my calendar for free coaching sessions again, Courtney, I didn't know you were going to say that, but, um, yeah, so all of that's over at, uh, Tony Rossi coaching.com. Those, those sessions are for those of you who have not booked a uh, free one with me or, uh, uh, in the past. Uh, so there, there is that, but yeah, Tony Rossi coaching.com. And uh, on Instagram, it's Tony.Rossi, Tony with a Y, Rossi with an I. Very cool. Very cool. No, that's great. And I think people are always looking for, uh, um, Courtney says, yes. What do I have, Courtney? Did you put something in the chat? Or you can do it on, you know, maybe you can't on YouTube. I don't know if you've got, you know, if you open the YouTube window, you're going to get like uh, feedback going on. What am I looking at? Oh, Courtney. Oh, muted yourself. Oh, oh I think she can't. I think she can't unmute her. Muted so. yourself. You can't unmute. Ask to unmute. <laughs> that, that took me a second, too. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's um, not letting me unmute. <laughs> um, no, that's great. I think people are looking for podcasts, and I, I always hear uh, great podcasts uh, regularly, and people burn through those. So that's that's fantastic. Check both of has been on my podcast multiple times. <laughs> Um, I will I will put uh, a, a post out there with you guys' um, info as well. Um, uh, Mon- Monique had a question uh, really quick before we wrap this up. Uh, does anyone have any thoughts on filing for unemployment as a non-union actor? Question mark. Is this a thing? Question mark. I don't know specifically, I mean, but I know that I believe that during COVID, um, that people that were working under 1099s had access to file for unemployment. I think that's a tax question. Um, I'm a big fan of using somebody as an actor to do your taxes for you. I, mm-hmm. I think it makes a huge difference. Um, and actually, I think we were going to do a webinar on that. I, I should really probably slate that up again. Um, if I can a give good. a plug to, Tony, if you, if to, you have, yeah. to someone, um, the, she doesn't do taxes, but Katie Chen Mazara is okay. a financial coach for creatives. I'm actually in one of her okay. uh, programs right now. Um, she she would know the answer to this. And she has a free Facebook groups. It's called Financial Freedom for Creatives. Okay. If um, if anybody wants to DM me and Sean, I can send it to you too. I'll, I'll yeah. find the link. But look up Katie, katiechenmazara.com. She, she knows like anything money related for actors. She's your person. And it depends upon where you're at too, I think. I've also looked at, I've almost gotten some emails from something called the Freelancers Union, I believe, um, which I think tries to create unionization uh, through a lot of freelancers, which is maybe a little bit different than the non-union thing. But I think it has, yeah, uh, it has it has something to do with uh, tax status on uh, 1099 versus employees. So that would be something to look at. 
Um, great. Yes. Awesome. Courtney, I didn't even get to talk to you about the union stuff. Courtney's also a yeah. member of the negotiation committee on the, on the, on the SAG after strike. So thank you for all the work that you're doing for that. And hopefully, yeah, uh, thanks. We, I hope we, we get uh, back to work soon. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. If anybody wants oh. to know about that, go to Courtney's podcast because you just did a whole episode on like I things see. that are going on in the room i think it's like super helpful yeah, to know yeah. that stuff um tony can you spell katie's name really quickly k-a-t-y c-h-e-n oh gosh m-a i think it's two z's a-r-r-a got it one r one r one r thank you okay um, oh, and if you if you do want to enter to get a free coaching from me, just email Courtney at CourtneyRue.com and let me know a goal you have, um, what you think is holding you back, and on a scale of one to ten, how willing you are to to work on that. That would be yeah. Awesome. Super duper. All right, everybody. I'll post some of this stuff. We have a, a free um section of our of our website where you just enter your email and um there's the a, a, a community board and everything i'll post some of this stuff on there too so super thanks everybody that's out thanks. there in the world um Hi. yes if you're a union or non-union rally with us come to the rallies and yeah support. yes definitely important time all righty uh we're gonna take a little pause we'll be on with the members of the practice in just a second thanks everybody out there we'll talk bye, to you bye everyone <laughs>